awaken to a certain level. Wow. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. That's good. Um, yeah, I know. I got some folks. You know, I want to supersede. Get over, Apostle. I'm going to have to grow up. Just doesn't yeah. happen. God, that's the way God does it. Come on now. Amen. Amen. This is the household of faith. Yes. Amen. Amen. Can't have two dads. He's got to, just got one dad. Amen. One dad. Yes. And if we ain't humble over here, so we can't have two dads. We got to have a patriarch and a patriarch. Amen. Right, Amen. But anyhow, it's all. You get, the, you get the keys to the family house sooner or later. Just keep serving. <laughs> keep doing what you need to do. Keep praying. You know what I'm saying? Keep serving the vision. And in, in, in due time, in your appointed time, God will bring it to you. But anyhow. But th these are the things we got to understand. So the mysteries of God, we have an opportunity. He's not going to give it to just everybody. It's not an elitist mentality either. Please, y'all, don't think on, more higher than you are. Please be level-headed. It's not necessarily... I'm, I, I get around people that don't understand and don't talk on the level that God has given me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't never feel like I have to tell people. You know, you just don't. That's not the way the scriptures was supposed to be. Uh, you know, I don't. Come on, I ain't got time for it. I, I've never been the person to say, "Hey, I'm gonna walk you out of the chains and show you what God meant." I'm not no verily, verily I say unto you. You yeah. heard it said verily. Yeah. That's not me. Never. No. I, I've never felt like it. I, I, was, I was just stay in my lane mm -hmm. because the seeing eye and the hearing ear comes from the Lord. Yeah. Doesn't come from my teaching and my instruction. Yeah. God has to do it. It's a divine act of God. Now you talking about the divine act of God? It has to happen. They learned that on the road to Emmaus. Mm -hmm. They went through scriptures. They had, they were off center. They had an encounter with God and they got back on center, got into the right place. They made it start following whatever. But anyhow. So speaking in tongues, it's, it's the context and the framework for operating in the realm of the spirit as it relates to mysteries. We need mysteries. The church needs to come up in its understanding in mysteries. It's something that a guy gave me some time ago. I asked the Apostle Burgess about it. And I was reading it over in Leviticus. I think, yeah, I think it's Leviticus. It said, don't seed a kid in milk. And I've read different versions, and he, I wanted to hear his perspective, perspective because he was a connoisseur as it comes to Old Testament stuff. Rather than going there and bringing stuff out of stuff, I'm like, I don't know how he did a warp and a wolf. I'm like, what the warp and a wolf? I'm like, oh, come on, man. But anyhow, he shared with me, he said, basically saying, don't just keep people on milk. Seething them, boiling them. You know, just be a pacified church. I can't just keep teaching certain principles over and over, which I do, over and over. There's some other things that God wants to talk about that just, you know, we, we talk about Christ, we talk about being renewed and all that stuff, but there's some other things I haven't talked about yet that I would like to talk about. But it, you have to be exposed privately your expansion privately will allow me to say things publicly. What you do privately will determine what is acceptable publicly. I know people say, well, I can just say it because God revealed it to me. No, if we're building something, if I'm trying to get you all, you know, to be under my spell or to, you know, make, keep me the center, centerpiece. No, it's not about me trying to keep you as a centerpiece or for you to toot my horn. It's Amen. not even about toot my horn. Amen. It's about us keeping a cadence in the spirit, Amen. growing together, being, yeah. being able to complement yeah. one another yeah. emotionally and spiritually yeah. so we can be able to say things that are lawful now, that we can yeah. talk about things, yeah. we can discuss things, yeah. and that we can cry one to another. Yeah. And you can say, yeah, apostle, God was showing me that privately, but you know what? You gave me a Apollos moment. You know, Priscilla and Aquila had to pull him aside. Yes. You know, they found him a more excellent way. And so that's what should happen. You should already be on the road to wherever God is taking us. Amen. Wow. And then I should be, you should be able to pull over sometimes and say, you know what, you just went, you, you got off the wrong exit. <laughs> get back on the highway. Yeah. We're going one place. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we've been taught and instructed in the things of God. Now, did I tell you guys go, go close? Go to John 14. I know y'all looking like it. Uh, John 14, 16. Then we're going to talk about some meaty stuff on Sunday. Some meaty stuff. Amen. We say, well, this is meaty tonight. John 14, 16. Yes, it is. It really is. Yeah. This is discipleship 201. <laughs> <laughs> I want to 
This is discipleship. This is the things when you have sons and you want to raise them up in the things of God. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, not well. I don't know about that. John 14, 16. I don't throw that term around. I know I don't I don't look. Back in the days, everybody, I had a friend, he was, everybody in their house was sons. And he had to say, oh, are everybody at your house sons? I said, no. I, don't, I, I hope they don't think they are. I said, I ain't got no problem with it. The, the line of demarcation has to be established so there won't be no false mm -hmm. expectations. Right. Right. The people get offended. When they, you, that's why you have to define your relationship so you'll know. Yeah. It's okay. I, 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 I relish being pastor. That's not a... Uh, an indictment against me and my 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 you know, whatever God has called me to. I, I love to be your pastor. That's the term of endearment to me. Being your pastor. This is my pastor. I feel good when people say this is my pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. But the only thing you think you're a son. I don't have a lot of sons. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's all right. I'm going to have some. Yeah. We're, just, we're, we're going to grow up mm -hmm. somewhere along the line. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Be his son first. Yes. Yeah. You want him to you want to say you want to hear his voice. You want to hear my voice anyway. Yeah. My voice should be secondary. The primary voice you should hear is him telling you this Amen. is my son. Yeah. Woman, please. Yeah. Because I can't erase rejection. Only him. Insecurity. None of those other factors that's in your life that's haunting you. I, I can't make those adjustments. If I if I attempt to remove anything you've been through biologically or experientially. Guess what? You're going to have an inordinate affection. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, and you're going to always depend on me to be the one to remove mm -hmm. it. And so I'm, it's going to be a handicap to you. But if you do it vertically first before you worry about the horizontal relationship, yes. mm -hmm. it'll be easy. Mm -hmm. Won't be no glitches, won't be no hitches. You just know. Amen. John 14. I hope I'm helping somebody. Mm -hmm. Amen. John 14, 16 says, And I will pray the Father that he should give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Who? The world. Now he wasn't talking about uh, the bars. Okay, he wasn't talking about prostitutes at the time or the public. He was talking about the religious system. The cosmos can't receive. You know what I'm saying? The aeon, as I should say. It says, uh, even the spirit of truth from the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. He dwelleth with you. Yes. And he should be in you. What are we talking about, y'all? The, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, mm -hmm. the Spirit of Truth. 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you some things. Oh. All things. He's, he he going to teach you what? All, all things. So I should teach you all things. I teach you some things. Am I right? Yeah. I give you the tools right. on how to cultivate that relationship. Yeah. That's it. That's all I do. I give you tools. The how-tos. I can't give you the why. Right. You get that once you just, <laughs> you get that through intimacy. Alright? He said, he teach you all things and bring all things to your what? Remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. In other words, in order for us to tap into the vein of mysteries, we must have previous exposure to truth. Yes, it's true. Hmm. Yes. Huh? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Somewhere along the line, there had to be a premeditated disposition <laughs> to go towards the things of God. And then, as I begin to engage that whole process by my study, my devotion, and intimacy, the Holy Spirit occasionally will come around and bring it to your remembrance. Mm -hmm. And even the things that we share publicly, mm -hmm. If you allow the paraclete to want to call alongside you to fulfill his role, then you stuff will come up on your screen in your mind and say, well, I remember I heard so and so. Mm -hmm. Then you'll play a, you, you hear me say it again, say, that's where I heard it from. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever he's telling you individually. That's the things he, he's sharing with you individually that nobody in here is exposed to. That's between you and him. That's, what, that's the secret of the Lord. Yeah. He told him in Psalm 25. He said that the secret of the Lord belongs to them that fear him. Those are secrets that he gives you. Amen. So speaking in tongues is the context and the framework of operating in the realm of the spirit so that we 
can be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit so we can have a framework in place so that we can transcend our natural understanding and it's going to bring us into a realm of supernatural empowerment. Yeah. Most of us want the dunamis. But then there's the exousia, there's the iscus, yeah. there's the kratos, there's the inner gale. Those are five, it's six different levels of power. But most Ooh. of the church, because we want the power. But inner gale is when he's at work in you, he's working in you, the will to do is the inner gale. Yeah. And, that's, and it says that he's going to do it immediately above all that you can ask to think. He's going to bypass your mental capacity yeah. or your mental frailties yeah. and your weaknesses, psychological bondages. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He's going to give you a whole new framework. I'm closed. That's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do with this church. So we can decree things freely. We can know the things that's been freely given to us. There's some things that's freely given to us. Freely. No stipulations. It belongs to you. What's the only expectation God has for us? Think about it. There's only one. Obedience. Obedience? That, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. What's it? Believe. Mature. Mature. He, that's what he wants us to do. Yeah, believing is a part of maturing. Obedience is a part of maturing. But I know some people that are not mature that do things obediently. And they only obey because they know the ramifications of disobedience. <laughs> wow. That's sin consciousness. I'm going to obey God because if I don't, Mature people say, I'm going to thank God because I love him. Yes. I'm not looking for retaliation or revenge. He's my daddy. Amen. But I do know disobedience will breed some things that I'm not able or don't want to be bothered with. <laughs> so I'm not making light of it. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's some things that you have to, the wastes of sin does bring up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into all that. 